Okay, um, hello again folks, uh, myself and Anita, we're back out in the woods uh, here at Cheshire Woodland Weddings. Um, it's a lot greener than it was last time. Yeah. You can't, yeah. You can't Amazing. see half the trees anymore. Um, we can hear the songbirds behind us. Sprung has definitely sprung, spring has definitely sprung even. Um, but yeah, um, so topic of conversation this morning that Anita's asked me about. Yeah, how, how, did, how did you get into working with the animals because you've had a really kind of varied animal working career haven't you yeah 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 um the how and why people ask me a lot actually and i don't really know why because there's nobody in my family that's worked with animals beforehand um, apart from my granddad who was a butcher <laughs> which is a very different kind of uh take on things um but it's something if you ask any if you ask anybody who's known me for a long time or the parents from day one as soon as i really knew what i wanted to do i was going to work with animals right i had no idea what capacity um obviously you go through the the ideas of becoming a vet and all that sort of jazz and i'm not that academic um my writing skills are a little bit to be desired sometimes um so once I found out that it was kind of five to seven years at, at university to be a vet, and that doesn't include the A-levels beforehand and everything else, that wasn't for me. I wasn't going down that route. Um, so I did a course at a local college as soon as I left school. And then it kind of just snowballed after that. Right. Um, and I, luck, um, I've been listening to something about luck. Uh, people saying, you're lucky to get into that position or you're lucky to be in that position. Uh, and somebody said something and it kind of struck true a little bit. Uh, yes, it's slightly lucky, but there's also, there's the preparation that's gone into you yes. being lucky. Yes, yes, yes. You can't just be lucky. Yeah. You have had to prepare to be in that situation for then somebody to come along and go, there's a, there's an option for you. Yeah. I mean, look, there is a lot to be said for for the, for the timing of things, yeah. isn't there? Oh, you know, I, and you, you happen to to be in the right position at the right time or the right place at the right time. Yeah. However, like you say, if you hadn't have done all that preparation beforehand, I wouldn't. You wouldn't. No. You wouldn't be in a position to be able to take on board that opportunity no. or for, for other people to, to realize that you have the skills that are required yeah, to yeah. do that. And, so. and yeah, and there's a few people that have uh, seen something in me that I've not seen myself and then and they've kind of pushed me forward. Um, so there's been a couple of mentors throughout the career that have, have gone right on. We're, do, we're doing this, whether you like to do it or not, this is where we're doing. Um, so, so yeah, so I, I started at, uh, it was actually Receive College way before anything it looks like today, because now it's a proper zoo set up. Yeah. Um, uh, and then one of the, well, the course head called me into the office one day. Um, at that point, I thought I was in trouble for something. Um, and basically said, I've got your job interview. You've got a job interview on Saturday. Get yourself down to Pets at Home. Um, and then that's, that started a, an eight year career working in pet shops and retail. Um, then I left them and I joined a small zoo. Uh, was there for about five years, then moved on to a zoo on the Isle of Wight, then to Bristol Zoo, and then a few things in between. And then now I'm working with Cheshire Hall career and doing things myself as well. So yeah. that's the general path. So what, so what got you into working with the birds then? Um, I've always had, a, I've always wanted to, to do kind of birds of prey, poultry and stuff anyway. Um, but I've kind of fallen into, I, I'm Sorry not, to I'm, interrupt yeah. here. There's a woodpecker pecking away at a tree not far from from us and I can we, we can both, both see it really that. clearly <laughs> you can hear it and you can see it really clearly it's just it's absolutely stunning we've got that. we've got three baby woodpeckers in and around the area at the moment so there's the pair of them are there that I don't know whether oh, it's yeah. babies but there's definitely yeah. a pair just of just on the trees over there I would turn the camera around so you can see it but these cameras aren't that good so we won't be able to see it <laughs> um, yeah sorry we were talking about birds uh, yeah, so um, I ended up being a presenter at a lot of the places where I've worked, uh, being front of house staff. Uh, retail side of things has kind of helped me loads with that. Um, obviously dealing with customers and stuff. Um, 
so I ended front of house staff um, and doing presentations, you always end up flying birds. Because when people come to see a demonstration at a zoo or anything like that, birds are, um, I won't say easy, but they're one that's that's used in displays a lot for people to see. Yeah. So then that kind of snowballs into birds of prey and then you just carry on going with that one. Yeah. So um, yeah. again, it's right place, right time and, and situations that you're in that just happen to move. So as well as that, I've also worked and trained fur seals, um, parrots, kookaburras, raccoons, uh, meerkats, all for display purposes. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. But it, it, it's, it's funny because, again, my working with the birds now and working alongside you, that was completely, you know, I'll say it, 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 it was by accident, really. Yeah. Because I came to see Steve, I was introduced to Steve who went to Valkyrie by a mutual friend who thought at the time I was doing a lot of leadership development and a lot of um, coaching in yeah. that. And um, I think Stephen not long since lost his wife. And so it was kind of like it might, you know, I might be able to help him with business or, or you know, any personal issues it wasn't really for me to be involved with with anything else and then Steve started to tell me about working with birds of prey and then said to me why don't you um, go on one of the experiences and spend some time at the Vulcaners and so on and it was like oh my god it was honestly it was like I had no plans to do any of this I arrived here in a, a business skirt suit and court shoes you know and um no no interest in in birds of prey or any birds for that matter um you know when i was when i was little we used to go to scotland a lot and and we'd see um eagles and that kind of thing and i loved i loved i've always loved that but not you know getting up close with them at all no. um and um and as i say when steve started to talk about it i was lecturing at university at the time on um, subjects such as emotional intelligence and transformational leadership and I was working with leaders in, in a lot of doing a lot of emotional intelligence assessments and, and um, helping them with leadership skills and so on and for me working with the birds mapped onto theories of, of yeah. uh, emotional intelligence because like at the core of, of one of the models that I use is um, uh, self-awareness, awareness of others, um, uh, and um, you know, self-regard, regard for others, um, trust, all of these kind of things that are so important to, to falconry. And I've noticed that when, when we work with the young people that we work with, and they're understanding, learning to understand the birds, their level of self awareness increases, so they they learn how they impact on the yeah world. yeah completely and and you 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 know as well as I do the the boys that we work with on a Tuesday, you know they'll say things like I am aware that the way I say this will impact on others in this way you know that that it's it, so that level of self awareness is is building phenomenally yeah. Well, it's it's like the the uh, chap we used to work with for you last year. Um, obviously, he had Tourette's. Oh yeah, had, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And um, his nickname for me was Granddad. If you like yeah. to, he called you Granddad. I'm not yeah. quite sure now, but anyway. Um, but yeah, when he first started, he was all lively, shouting, screaming, and moving around all over the place. Like when once we kind of got him walking in the woods. Everything slowed down. Yeah. His speech, everything, you know, the way he moved, everything just completely slowed down. Yeah, and he, he became aware of how he, he can impact on others yeah. by being more, um, I'll refer to it as a bit hyper, you know, that, that intensity that yeah. comes across with someone with ADHD and Tourette's and that kind of thing. 
and and he became aware of it and and to have some level of control over it and that, and that was absolutely phenomenal but he be, it just became a natural thing didn't it yeah yeah you know? as soon as he put his vest on and his glove on it's okay if we're going to work now we, we've yeah got yeah. to work on a different level yeah yeah, yeah. And it, it was all of that, seeing the way, for me, seeing the way that the falconers worked with the birds and listening to what they were saying. And then, you know, when I watched them training other people and um, about that awareness that you need with the birds, when they're man you're manning the birds mm -hmm. um, and, you know, something like a hawk and, and how you're getting it used to being touched and all that kind of thing. And it was sort of like, it, you know the instructions like you can't approach a, a bird in this way because you need to be aware of of the impact that has on the bird because if you're coming looming over from the from above then Everything's yeah then, then the bird yeah. is is um more aware of things that come from above and feels threatened and all of this so as you're learning this you're learning i impact on others in this way yeah yeah and um and also having an understanding of of how the bird is impacted on and what how it's for want of a better word feeling and and you know its reactions to it based on you so it's that that self-awareness and awareness of others yeah. that that comes through it and it, it was always phenomenal to yeah, see yeah. that constantly reading the situation and, yeah yeah um, and but for that for, for that within sort of i would say two weeks of me meeting steve that was a game changer for me yeah, yeah. it was like a eureka moment and it was like oh my goodness th this this can really help people yeah massively um obviously for, for me working wise it's always been kind of with the animal animals bit of front of house we're doing presentations but obviously working with you over the last three years yeah oh you're nearly four years now yeah um obviously we got more involved with that and and then it's opened my eyes to a lot of other things that, and potentials that could help people with nature and, and i'm watching birds flying around if everybody's watching just, wondering where i'm going yeah um, it's just phenomenal um so yeah the the the, the power of nature in itself for uh, just healing and everything else is huge and I um, I think for me over the coming years my career is going to probably turn slightly more that way it's never going to come away from animals no no but it's it's turning more that way uh, inclined um, to help people no. more now I think as well yeah. um, I think I, I think we'll should we should we call it a, a, a day for today and bring that up in our next session because I think that that's a whole session. That's a itself. whole session on itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I was just just going to say like because obviously now I'm with so on career wise there was a bit where I stepped away from the animals and I worked in an industry that I never thought I'd work in. I actually worked with the railway for a while, and I'm not ashamed to say that at one point I pretty much broke. Yeah. Like I was I was done. <laughs> uh, so I was off with stress, uh, anxiety, all the rest of it. Uh, and it got to a point where myself and my wife sat down and it was a case of, okay, we need to do something else now. And on about right time, right place, right time, just happened to be looking through uh, adverts for jobs. And I came across Steve at the centre was advertising for a head falconer. And at a particular time, I was like, okay, I haven't got experience to be the head falconer, but we'll throw in my CV and see what happens. 20 minutes after sending the email, Steve phoned me up. I'm down for an interview this afternoon mm -hmm. and the rest they say is history <laughs> oh, that's amazing, so yeah uh, right place right time but again preparation to put myself so my cv was good enough yeah for steve to go okay well we'll speak to him and see where it goes from there yeah so brilliant. yeah brilliant. brilliant so that's us for now and we will um see you again soon take care folks <laughs>